Hello, I am Seema and welcome to part 5 of the chapter Redox Reactions. Let us now do the types of redox reactions. There are four types of redox reactions. That is combination reactions, the decomposition reactions, displacement reactions and disproportionation reactions. In this video, we are going to do the first two categories that is combination reactions and the decomposition reactions. When you say combination, this is something that you've done in class 10 also, where you did the different categories, the types of chemical reactions. So in a combination reaction, if you remember, what is combination? What is, what is something combining? When two small pieces join together to give you one uh, larger molecule or a larger piece, that would be a combination reaction. For example, if you imagine them to be uh, balls of things, this is one component, this is the other, and they combine to give you a larger entity. So a combination is where you have small particles joining together to give you a larger particle. To identify a combination reaction, you would see that it always has more than one reactants but the product is only one. That is a very simple way of looking at it, that there are small particles that are joining, that are combining together to form a larger molecule. But in a combination reaction, to be a redox reaction, it is essential that one of those reacting components should be an element. What could be the reason behind this? You have studied how to calculate the oxidation number of every atom in a compound. And you've also understood this already, that a change in oxidation number would uh, represent, uh, would mean that it has undergone oxidation or reduction. If the oxidation number increases, the substance has undergone oxidation. And if the oxidation number decreases from the reactant to the product, then that particular atom has undergone reduction. And we also know that for most elements, the, uh, they have only one oxidation state in the combined form. But in the elemental form, the oxidation number is always zero. So if it undergoes that change from zero to that state, it means it has undergone oxidation or reduction. So that charge may be positive or negative. Therefore, one of these should be in the elemental forms so that you can see the change in the oxidation states in a combination reaction. Otherwise, in other reactions, oxidation reduction may be taking place, but you, may, you might not call it a combination reaction. Another thing, almost all combustion reactions are taken to be uh, combination reactions and they are taken to be uh, they are taken to be combination reactions because most of the combustion reactions are where you take a fuel and you burn it in oxygen. So most of them are where you have a fuel and you're burning it in oxygen and the two combine together to give you the oxide of that substance which is burning. But sometimes a combustion process may be a redox reaction but it may not be a combination reaction. We'll come to all of that. It is not really very confusing. It's very simple to understand. So let us talk about combination reactions. In a combination reaction, you have two uh, reactants, let us say A and B, and they combine together to give you the product C. Now A and B, both of them can be elements or either one of them, one, at least one of them should be an element. And it's not necessary that you have only two components. You could have more than two components combining together to form one product also. So in a combination reaction, you have two or more reactants combining together to give you one final product. And for a combination reaction to be a redox reaction, whether the combination reaction is a redox reaction or not, you would see by checking out their oxidation numbers. Here are some examples. Carbon combines with oxygen to give you carbon dioxide. Now, let us see what are the oxidation states or the oxidation numbers. Let us assign oxidation numbers to each of the atoms or each of the elements here. Carbon in the elemental state would be zero. Oxygen in the elemental state would also be zero. We know when we heat them, it results in the formation of carbon dioxide. So in the molecule carbon dioxide, the charge on carbon would be plus four and the charge on oxygen would be minus two, right? If you do not understand how these 
uh, values or these oxidation states are assigned I would uh, encourage you to watch the previous videos learn how to assign these values and then understanding this would be very easy for you so this has a charge of minus 2 and carbon has a charge of minus 4 so what is happening to carbon carbon is changing from 0 to plus 4 it means its, its oxidation number is increasing from 0 to plus 4 so it is getting oxidized oxygen had the oxidation number 0 and it is changing to minus 2 from 0 to minus 2 the value is decreasing therefore oxygen is undergoing reduction and therefore this is a redox reaction and you have already studied that reduction and oxid oxidation can never occur uh, individually if reduction is occurring oxidation automatically is occurring simultaneously because for reduction something should get oxidized in order to reduce it so reduction and oxidation always occur simultaneously and that's the reason why we call them redox reactions a reaction which has reduction and oxidation going on in it the second example is also a combination reaction where you have magnesium combining with nitrogen to form magnesium nitrite magnesium again in the elemental form nitrogen in the elemental form both of them would have oxidation numbers zero but magnesium nitride would be magnesium has a charge of plus two while nitrogen has a charge of minus three so what is happening again magnesium is going from zero to plus two it's getting oxidized nitrogen is going from zero to minus three it is getting reduced therefore this is very much a redox reaction and it is a combination reaction now this example has been given to you which is a combustion reaction right it is a combustion reaction it is a redox reaction but would you call it a combination reaction take a look here this is methane methane combines with oxygen one of them is in the elemental form and it is very much a, a, a combustion process and let us see to what happens what do we get we get carbon dioxide and we get water what are the charges carbon has a charge of minus 4 in this but here in carbon dioxide it has a charge of plus 4 in methane it is minus 4 hydrogen is plus 1 and hydrogen remains plus 1 it's no change in hydrogen oxygen was 0 and oxygen becomes minus 2 in both these cases so the oxidation state of oxygen is changing from 0 to minus 2 therefore oxygen is get, getting reduced Carbon changed from minus 4 to plus 4, therefore carbon is getting oxidized. But there is no change that is happening to hydrogen. Hydrogen as, a, as an atom or as, a, as an atom of a, an element is not undergoing either oxidation or reduction. Why? The other point, why did I say this is not a combination reaction? Because for a combination reaction, you must have more than one reactant, but the product should be one single giant product. So you have small pieces joining together, fusing together to form a giant product. But here you're getting a byproduct also. Water, you could call it a byproduct or you could just say that you're getting two products. So since it is not one product, this is not a combination reaction. But why did we put it here? Or why did NCRT put this equation here? Because it is a redox reaction. It is a combustion reaction. And we say all combustion reactions are redox reactions. And but all combustion reactions may be redox reactions, but it's not necessary that they would be combination reactions too. Mostly they are, but it's not always. So that was about combination reactions. Now let us come to the opposite of the combination reaction. The opposite of combination reaction is decomposition reaction. They are just, just as we say, what is oxidation? What is reduction? Whatever oxidation is, reduction is the opposite of that. You have seven definitions of oxidation and for reduction all you have to do is just write the opposite. Gain of electrons, loss of electrons, gain of this, um, uh, hydrogen, loss of hydrogen. Whatever is your definition, they, when you talk of oxidation and reduction, you are going to go opposite. In the same way, when you talk of combination and decomposition reactions, they are just the two opposites. If combination was two pieces joining together to give you one product, decomposition on the other hand is one giant reactant, one molecule breaking down to give you smaller molecules or uh, atoms or whatever. So smaller molecules of compounds or elements. Now. A giant molecule breaks down so a decomposition reaction is the opposite of a combination reaction in this 
Now, in order for a combination reaction to be a redox reaction, I had said that it should have at least one of the reactants which is an element. Because most of the elements, they have only two oxidation states. One is in the elemental state and one is whether they got oxidized or reduced, they will show one particular charge normally. So the same situation is here. But you already have the giant, so what would be the condition here? In order for a decomposition reaction to be a redox reaction, one of the products should be an element. Since we are talking of an exact opposite of that. So if we talk of reactants here, we talk of products there because the reactant in a combination reaction, if you reverse the arrow, this becomes a decomposition reaction and therefore that becomes the product in a decomposition reaction. So your language just changes from reactant to product, from joining to breaking, uh, one react, uh, two reactants to give you one product, one reactant to give you more than one product. So it is just the opposite. So what are decomposition reactions? In this, the compound breaks down into two or more components, one of whom must be an element. Examples are given here, three examples. Water breaks down to give you hydrogen and oxygen. Of course, you could use these reactions in decomposition as the opposites of these also. And you could use these as combination if you put these, the reactants and the products in the opposite direction and change the conditions to the opposite. If you are giving heat, you'll be taking out heat. So whatever, it, they are just the opposites of each other. So water molecule gives you hydrogen and oxygen. So let us see the oxidation numbers. In water molecule, hydrogen has a charge of plus one and oxygen has a charge of minus two. In the products, you have both of them in the elemental form, both have the charges of zero or oxidation states of zero. So let us see, from plus one, hydrogen goes to zero. So its oxidation number is decreasing it is undergoing reduction. If the oxidation number is increasing, it is undergoing oxidation. Oxygen had a charge of minus two and it becomes zero. From minus two to zero, it is gaining the oxidation number. Therefore, it is getting oxidized. So oxygen is getting oxidized, isn't that interesting? Oxygen is getting oxidized here while hydrogen is getting reduced. Next, sodium hydride gives you sodium and hydrogen. Sodium and in sodium hydride, sodium has a charge of plus one and hydrogen has a charge of minus one. And in the elemental form, of course, both of them have charges of zero. So sodium is going from plus one to zero. So it is undergoing reduction. Hydrogen is undergoing oxidation because it is going from minus one to zero, which is a higher value. So hydrogen is getting oxidized and therefore this is a redox reaction and since it has one reactant and more products therefore it is a decomposition reaction and this decomposition is a redox reaction because one of them one of the products is an element then you have kclo3 in kclo3 potassium has a charge of plus one chlorine has a charge of plus five and oxygen has a charge of minus two <coughs> it breaks down to give you, it decomposes to give you potassium chloride and oxygen. Now, assign the charges to uh, KCl and oxygen too. In the products, potassium has a charge of plus one, chlorine minus one, oxygen zero. Now look carefully, potassium in the reactant side had a charge of plus one, and in the product also it has a charge of plus one, which means potassium is neither undergoing oxidation nor reduction. Chlorine had came from plus five to minus one, a decrease of six oxidation numbers. Therefore, since it is decreasing, it is reduction, it is getting reduced. Oxygen goes from minus two to zero, so it is increasing by two steps. So oxygen is getting oxidized, chlorine is getting reduced, while there is no change in the case of potassium. Now, just as we said here that a reaction may be a combustion reaction, but it may not be a combination reaction, although it is a redox reaction. Here, you may find that a reaction may be a decomposition reaction, but it may not be, um, uh, it may not be a redox reaction at all. In order for it not to be a redox reaction at all, 
if you take a look at this reaction it would not be a redox reaction being a, a decom it is a decomposition reaction but it is not a redox reaction because for a decomposition reaction to be a redox reaction one of the products should be an element that condition is not being fulfilled here another thing if we look at their oxidation numbers also we would understand what happens here in calcium carbonate calcium has a charge of plus two carbon has a charge of plus four and oxygen has a charge of minus two in calcium oxide, calcium has a charge of plus 2, oxygen minus 2, carbon plus 4 and oxygen minus 2. What's interesting here? Take a look carefully. Calcium plus 2, calcium plus 2, carbon plus 4, carbon plus 4. Oxygen minus 2, oxygen is present in both the compounds and it has the charge of minus 2. So none of the components, none of the elements in the compound are undergoing oxidation or reduction. So you do have a giant molecule which is breaking down into smaller components, but this is not a redox reaction because none of the species is undergoing a change in its oxidation number. So from this, you have understood the first two uh, types of redox reactions that is combination reactions and decomposition reactions. In the next video, we'll do the displacement reactions. With this, I'll wrap up today's video. If you found it helpful, give it a thumbs up, subscribe to my channel, recommend it to your friends, and please keep returning for more videos in chemistry. Thank you for watching and bye-bye for now.